Welcome to Fancy Legends, my name's Scott and today we're going to do something a little different on the channel. We're going to look at all the Eidolons from Final Fantasy IX and see what inspired them in real life. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now let's get on with the video. First up we have Shiva that is actually based off the Hindu god of destruction. I'm <laughs> looking at her ice attack, I'm not surprised by that. Uh, she is from the main uh, three gods from the Hindu religion, the, what they call the Hindu triad. And um, his role is mainly to destroy the world and periodically recreate it. I'm not too sure why the developers went with the ice aesthetic, but it's probably because um, the real Shiva is uh, blue. So I would take that as the, the reason why. The second one we'll look into today is Rama, who's the lightning Eidolon mainly. Um, he is normally depicted as an old man and a bearded sage. Um, he could be based off of King Ramu, who was supposedly a king of a sunken continent. The lightning aesthetic probably can't come from there though, so for that we probably have to look at the Hebrew word Ramam, uh, meaning thunder or thunderclap. The third Eidolon we have is a fan favourite of the Final Fantasy series, Ifrit. The most likely inspiration for this is from Arabian mythology. Ifrit is the name given to the class of jinn that embodies fire. Though these fire demons could live for thousands of years, they are not actually immortal and if cut would bleed, the fire running through their veins, consuming their body. We actually see that in the game where he actually embodies fire, or it seems that way anyway. Um, he could also um, come from some of the genie um, sort of mythology where he comes from an unseen dimension <laughs> as he comes up rising up from the ground. The Hellfire attack itself um, that he uses iconically is um, probably from a, a jinn satan role that f comes from the Islamic religion. Um, it's used as a way to show that he is superior to mankind. The fourth one we're going to look at today is Atmos, which is actually quite interesting. It comes from the Greek word indivisible and its origin of the word atom which means cannot be cut, which is actually quite fitting considering he appears as a wormhole in the game. For number five, we have Odin, who's a fan favourite in Final Fantasy. Um, most people will know where this comes from, as um, Vikings are very popular right now. Odin in the Norse religion is the leader of Asgard, and he is normally associated with knowledge, battle, sorcery, poetry, things of that nature. He is also sometimes associated with death as he reigns over the halls of Valhalla. One of the most famous stories of Odin is where he sacrifices his left eye to drink from Minir's well in which to gain all the knowledge of the past, present and future, naming himself the wise one. For number six we have the Lothiathan, um, normally referred to as the king of the seas. This probably refers to the Shinto god Ryujin, who is said to be a dragon who reigns over the seas. In Final Fantasy IX he is very water based, so this sort of makes sense. He could also be seen as resembling the Chinese dragon, mythical beings seen as the rulers of the moving body of water, and the dragon god as the dispenser of rain itself. For number seven, we have the King of Dragons himself, Bahamut. Um, however, his story actually originates from an enormous whale wow, um, in the ancient pre-Islamic Arabian mythology. However, the developers could have been influenced more by the modern times telling of Dungeons and Dragons who are responsible for reimagining Bahamut as the King of Dragons, a benevolent platinum dragon who is the opposite to the malevolent Tiamat, the five-headed chromatic queen of dragons. For number eight, we have Fenrir, another famous Norse uh, mythology. Um, he was a monstrous dwarf that was um, said to be the end times and was going to kill um, Odin himself during Ragnarok. Another interesting fact about the Norse Fenrir is that he was also Loki's son. Moving on to number nine, we have the phoenix, um, which is based off Greek mythology and is normally a long-lived bird that is regenerated or reborn. 
The bird is normally associated with the sun and attains new life from the ashes of its predecessor. According to some legends, the phoenix could live over 1,400 years before it was ever reborn. Um, it's very close, actually, to the myth, to the Final Fantasy IX version that we actually get. And um, the fact that um, he revives the party when summoned um, is almost identical to what the phoenix in real life does itself. We've reached number 10, and that is Carbuncle. It was said to be a mythical creature spotted by the Spanish in the Americas, and it was described as a small creature, either a bird or a mammal, that had a gem on its forehead, crystallised from the brain of a dead dragon. According to the myth, it is good luck to catch the Carbuncle, and also in the game as well, as it does give you protect. So we've reached our final Eidolon for today, number 11, Alexander. I know this one's not a uh, summonable um, Eidolon, however I thought I'd add this in for a bonus. Um, this could have two world meanings, the first one being Alexandra the Great, which most people know of as the Macedonian king. The second could be that it's referring to the legendary gates of Alexandra, which were believed to be raised to protect the Macedonian Empire. So there you have it, Final Fantasy IX's Eidolons and their real-world inspirations. What did you guys think? Did I miss any? Let me know in the comments down below. And remember, please like and subscribe for more daily videos. Thank you for listening.